OK, uh, so here we will talk about our first classification model, uh, which is called logistic regression model. So for this model, I keep in mind that uh, this model does have the regression in its name, but it is really for classification. OK, so logistic regression model is for classification. It's not a regression model. So it does have name regression in the name but it is for classification it is not regression for it is not for regression okay uh, so first let's talk about the, the logis, logistic function so um, if you re remember that before earlier that we want to predict the house price the, the type of the house so it can be either a single family home a non-single family home. Okay, so there are only just two times. Okay, and the reason we don't want to use OLS or simple linear regression, linear regression, um, because um, that results are hard to interpret, and also it violate uh, those assumptions that for uh, linear regression models. So here we, what we want to do is that instead of predict the label itself we are actually predict the possibility for each label. So in this case, we have just two um, outcomes. So two types of the uh, house types, so single family or not single family. So we predict the possibility of become a single family home and also possibility of become a non-single family home. Okay. So if the possibility of become single family home is greater than 550%, sorry, 50%, then we say, okay, so that house is a single family home. If the possibility of becoming a non-single family home is greater than 50%, and now we all say, okay, so that house will be a non-single family home. Okay, so that's the idea of the classification. So we are not going to predict the labels directly, but instead we are going to predict the possibility of that record becoming each type of label. So, so for each single record, so for example, if there's a house that, let's say, um, it is built in 2000, and also uh, the price is 500,000, so we see that P for a single family home is 60%. And also the P for a non-single family home is 40%. Okay? Because those two together will be one. And in this case, we are say, okay, so we are predict, okay, so that house is a single family home. So if that uh, probability is greater than 50%. Okay, so now what we need is that uh, we want to predict the value that we want. The large positive values of all the betas were corresponding to uh, the possibility that is close to one. So for example, that if we have alpha plus um, alpha, uh, uh, alpha plus, sorry. alpha plus beta 1 times uh, price plus beta 2 times the house age, the year that house been built. So we want this one. If that is great, so we want that close to 1. So large positive values, we are close to 1. And large negative values, we are, uh, we are close to 0. Okay, so we want a function that will uh, look like this. And that is what we can use for use a logistic function. So logistic function is uh, is perfect that if the value is large to one, to large uh, is, is the value is very, very large to a positive value, it will be one. If the value is large to a negative value, the corresponding function will be zero. Okay, so that is a logistic functions. So when the x gets larger and positive, the function will close to zero to one, and when x gets larger and negative, 
the function will close to zero. Okay, and so if we put that one on the visualization, so that the logit function look like. Okay, so it will the uh, it will close to one if the value become uh, if the x the variables become get large and positive, and if the x get large and also negative, and the value will close to zero. So you can feel like okay, so now if this function is perfect. So this function is perfect to calculate the probability. Okay, so that is a logistic function. And now let's look at the logistic function regression model. So the model. Uh, so the model here, let's say we, we are using the p probability to, to donate the probability of the y equals 1. So for example, if it is single family home. And if the probability equals zero, so that means that it is not a single family home. And next, we see that the odds of the house being a single family home will be like this. Okay, P divided by one minus P. Okay, so if the probability of the house become a single family home will be this one, so the odds will be 3.33. Okay. And next, the logistic regression will be that the log of the logs or the logistic function of the p-value, which equals this one, will become our regression models. Okay, so in this case, it will be alpha uh, plus beta one times uh, the house price plus beta two times the house age. Okay, so this one will equals the log of the odds, or will equals logic regression of the p-value, and also equals uh, this one. And next, uh, we can re uh, we can figure out this um, uh, formula so that we can just calculate the p-value. So p-value in this case will be in this formula. So in this case again, where uh, alpha equal alpha. Uh, so within this premises, the formula in our example will be alpha plus beta one times the house price plus beta two times the house area. Okay, so we bring that one into this formula into this logistic function, and finally, so if the p value is greater than 0.5 and we see that y equals 1. So that means if p-value is greater than 5, uh, it will be a single family home. If the p-value is less than 0.5, it will be a non-single family home in, in our example. OK, so in another way that, so instead of calculating the direct labels, we are calculating the, um, the probabilities where we bring the odds into this log function. So log of the odds equals our uh, this regression, this formula. Um, and we transfer that formula to resolve the P, to calculate the P. So we say, OK, P equals this one. And within this parentheses, we still have our beta, alpha, and also independent variables, which will be price and also the age, or the house that you have been built. OK, so that is a model. And f next, so how can we estimate the betas? So we still have betas in that models. Um, so that will be a little bit complicated. So just uh, FYI that we, are, we can use gradient descent to choose the betas that can maximize the likelihood of the data. OK, so we can use gradient descent to choose the betas that can maximize the likelihood of the beta. OK, so, uh, so we are not going to details about how to estimate betas, but just FYI that to do that, normally we're using a gradient descent approach. So that's why that we, we introduced that one in the, uh, in the previous weeks. Uh, so we use gradient descent to choose the betas that can maximize 
the likelihood of the data.